in Texas crazy. Shall we begin? What's going on, people? Welcome to another Create Your New Life. I am your host, Michael G. Davis, broker, CEO, Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we got a great session today. Uh, we're going to continue our series about the psychology of real estate. Uh, so put on your seatbelts. Man, we're going to get this thing, get this show off the road right here, man. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday to you. I uh, definitely want to say thank you for visiting us. If this is your first time uh, spending time with us on our Create Your New Life, uh, whether somebody sent you, like, emailed you the video or sent you a text or maybe you're checking it out on our social media page, I mean, on our YouTube channel. However, man, we want to say thank you for um, just tuning in. Um, While well, we got some agents on uh, as well as some affiliates on, so you all know, as always, you have the opportunity ask questions, make comments, be a part of the conversation. That's kind of the value or the benefit um, as it relates to um, having access to our Create Your New Lives that we do on Tuesdays at 12.30. So take advantage. Ask questions. Let's do some coaching. Let's get down to it. All right, with that being said, for those um, that spend time with us every week, you know that we always start off with speaking a little bit about how you all can or how, how you can engage with us. Uh, one of them, the best way or the best outlet is social media. Right? Uh, we have a YouTube channel. I think our YouTube channel gives us the best representation of who we are as a company. You're going to be able to see videos. You're going to be able to see property tours, different events that we've done, uh, examples of our coaching sessions, examples of our, our, our actual you know, well, uh, creative uh, life and business meeting. So you'll be able to see all of that um, through our YouTube channel. We post about two or three videos a week on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, then you'll be able to get notified when we have new content coming up. And I, I tell people all the time, you know, our YouTube channel uh, is obviously great, a great tool, great resource for our Brooks and Davis agents. It's also a great tool and resource for individuals that are not a part of Brooks and Davis. So you get great insight, great information on our YouTube channel. So just sub uh, uh, to uh, so go ahead and subscribe. Now also our Facebook business page, whenever we have upcoming events, that's what we do, you know, our, our promoting, our marketing. So if you want to stay see what we have going on uh, on a regular basis, then uh, go ahead and like our business Facebook page so you'll be notified. It's another one of those areas where we um, where we post two to three, you know, two to three uh, post per week of um, the very, very open houses we're having. Like we have an event coming up. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Um, you know, again, property tours, information as it relates to some of the resources our agents have access to, our, our, uh, meet the broker events. So that's the place to go if you want to see what upcoming events that we have going on uh, as a broker. I mean, as a brokerage. And then, you know, I'm, I'm on all the rest of them, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and then I have a personal Facebook. So, you know, social media is the best way to engage. Uh, now, you know, as you, if you're not a part of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm yet, um, I may say some things or you may hear some things that really sparks your ear and you, you, you want to learn more about it. Uh, so right now I have a link up on the screen. Uh, I highly encourage you, you know, if, you're, if you feel like where you are right now, where you're planted as a real estate professional or aspiring real estate professional, because we have agents and affiliate members. Um, if you feel like you're not in the position to be able to maximize on the potential that you know that you have, uh, you need somebody to help support and kind of nurture you, get you to the next phase of your career, then set up an online or in-person company introduction and you can learn more about what we have, have here to offer at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. So uh, that's that link. It's real simple. It'll probably take you about 60 seconds uh, and then we'll, we'll have you on the calendar. All right, and then finally, you know, one of the things that we offer through our uh, providership, uh, the Brooks and Davis Real Estate Continuing Education Institute, is that we offer free co um, continuing education, elective credit, 
for our realtors that get on board. Um, all they have to do is just stay logged in the whole time, show their face while they're on, uh, and they get an easy hour of uh, elective credit. So when it comes time to renew, um, you know, yeah, you you know, you'll still have to do your, your legal. You'll still have to do um, the the other ones or uh, updates, maybe. But you won't have to worry about doing the elective credits that Trek requires because you will be able to accumulate these hours of elective credit over time as you get on with the credit your new life. So you know that's also another benefit and value. Um, that we provide to our agents. Okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? Um, again, we're continuing our conversation as it relates to um, the psychology of real estate, you know, the emotional uh, and the mental aspects that as real estate professionals we deal with, especially new real estate professionals uh, have to deal with. So we're continuing that conversation today, and we're going to be talking about goals, like, right? you know, ultimately determining when is it that you want to achieve what it is that you want to achieve, setting deadlines, goal posts, things like that. Um, so, you know, today's title, what is goal setting really about? That's what we're going to spend our time on, and that's where we're going to spend our time today. Um, we're going to be identifying goals and the most effective ways to execute after goal setting. You know, we're also going to talk about how to always remain positive when you're a real estate professional and why it's so detrimental that we do. Um, looking at some special coaching sessions that our realtors go through with the broker concern and building their custom real estate business. Uh, and then again, we've got some upcoming trainings and events with our coaching and training center, uh, a great one that we're going to be doing here on Thursday, getting a lot of uh, attention. Um, looks like we're going to have to shut the registration down because we've gotten so much um, registrants for that event. So um, that's pretty exciting. Uh, all right. So now um, let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time. Oh, I'm sorry. The quote. So the quote, I actually just repurposed the same quote from last week because it just really spoke to what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and again, that quote was from Tony Robbins. And it says, it's not about the goal. It's about becoming the type of person that can accomplish the goal. And that, again, that quote, I feel once we really get into the meat and potatoes of today's session, uh, you're going to be able to see that when striving for a goal, uh, what you're really looking for is growth. You're looking for the opportunity to move and grow in a particular area. So, uh, and again, we're going to get into more, more of that uh, as we uh, but yeah, so that's the quote for today. Again, it was the one, the same one that we had last week, uh, and I just felt like it just made sense for me to repurpose it for this week. It's not about the goal. It's about becoming the type of person that can accomplish that goal. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, with our next segment, we like to spend a little bit of time in our core ideology. Uh, we call it our moment in core. That's this segment, and that's where we sit down and we look at um, you know, our, you know, what makes us up. We look at our culture. So, you know, our ideology is made up of three core pieces. Uh, one of them is our core goal. Uh, the other one is our core mission. And the last one is our five core values. Um, so the value that I want to highlight today that we're going to spend a little, you know, a couple of seconds talking about is constant positive attitude. Um, you know, one of the things that we really promote at Brooks and Davis and in any kind of business, if you're going to have a level of success, um, then a positive attitude, a positive mindset, a positive mentality is critical. Right? If, if you're approaching things with a level of negativity and pessimism and, you know, if you're bringing that to the table a lot, let me tell you why that's so uh, detrimental that that's how you're approaching things. Uh, because the reality is life is life, and it's not always going to be rose, period. Uh, but your perspective is so important because ultimately you attract um, what you send off, right? I'm a real big energy person, right? So if you, the kind of energy that you get, give off is the kind of energy that you're going to receive. Um, so as it relates to the positive mental attitude, if you're always approaching things with a level of positivity, guess what's going to happen? People 
are going to want to be around you. And we are in the people business, meaning the more people that want to be around you, the more people that like you, the more people that want to do business with you, the more money that you're going to make. So you want to have an attractive persona. You want to be attracting people to you on a regular basis. Now, what's the opposite of that? A negative as attitude? Guess what that does? That repels people. Nobody wants to be around a negative attitude. There's more than enough negativity that people are exposed to on a daily basis. I promise you, I get my fair share. I ain't even got to try, but I get negativity to be around negativity, right? Whether you're looking on the TV, the radio, uh, social media, just walking down the street, you can overhear a conversation of some people and, uh, and, they, and they're, they're spewing negativity into the atmosphere. So no one is drawn to people that are negative, and that could be bad for business, I promise you, if you're pushing people away. So when it, as it relates to a positive attitude and being consistent with your positive attitude, that's just one way that that impacts your life. There's so many other, you know, if you look at scientific studies, it is proven that your attitude can impact your health. It can impact your, your mindset. It can, you know, it can, it can relieve you of certain diseases. Look, man, the mind is a very powerful thing, and because of that, you want to feed it the right kind of um, input. So a positive attitude is paramount with having a level of success in real estate. And mark my words, this business is going to give you plenty to be negative about, but you got to fight the urge, right? Because at the end of the day, even if it doesn't do anything else for you, even if a constant positive attitude don't do nothing else for you, what it will do is allow you to enjoy this business a whole lot more. I, I assure you of that. So with that being said, that is our moment in court. Now, uh, shout out. We did bring on a new affiliate, Mr. Artigua White. You know, he's in the process. He, you know, he comes from a background of investing, um, felt that becoming a realtor is something that he's, you know, very interested in, really wants to focus on being an apartment locator. So we're going to help him in that vein. And uh, we just definitely want to welcome him to the family. Uh, he's in the process of doing his classes. Uh, then we'll start working with our new study hall program that we're putting in place to help people get past the tests. Uh, and then help him get to the next phase of being licensed and transitioning as an apartment locator. So definitely want to welcome Artigua to the family. Uh, and, I, and we know that there are going to be some great things out there for uh, Mr. Artigua White, who is um, signed on as a new affiliate member. Okay, with that being said, we, uh, let's see what kind of production that we did this week. Uh, we did have had a lot of closings, a lot of closings, which is a good thing for people that had stuff up on the board, meaning there's money in their pocket. Um, so congratulations to those whose uh, transactions closed out. Uh, we did get some new production, not as much as what we're used to. It looks like we're getting spoiled because we got so used to bringing in a million a week of new production. Um, but uh, this week we just had one transaction uh, with Lisa Vaughn put a new property on the board, $175,000. So congratulations, Lisa, uh, for getting in the mix. Um, but again, you know, shout out to our top three. Uh, if you are not on the top three, if, you're, if your name is not on this board, right, for the amount of agents that we have, uh, it's not enough people on this board, right? So if that's the case for you, then you need to take advantage of the coach, right? You know, I, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to say it some more, and then I'm going to say it, and can keep saying it, and keep saying it, right? If your name is not on this pending board, you do not have contracts in the pipeline, every week I need to be seeing you, right? I shouldn't be chasing you about, and I shouldn't be having to get on you, and you, and y'all know who y'all talking to. I ain't got to call nobody out, because you know if your name on this board or not, Right? And you know if you're not being consistent with your coaching sessions. If your name not on this board, you're not consistent. And even if your name is on this board, you're not in the top three on a consistent basis. You need to be meeting with me at least once a week to 
We go through our coaching session and get this thing right, right? That's the way. There is no, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. Look, just ask all these other realtors out here that have been in it for years and they can't get any kind of traction under their feet uh, because they're at brokerage firms that don't offer coaching. Or they may offer coaching, but, you know, it's $1,000, $2,000 a month on top of whatever their splitting stuff is. You know, if a person can pay $1,000 to $2,000 a month for coaching, they may not need it if they got that amount of money to be able to pay for something. So, you know, it, it becomes... Um, um, it becomes a situation or it becomes counterproductive. So again, if you ain't on here, boom, let's go. Click, you know, set your appointments, set your coaching sessions, let's get it in. All right, uh, but I uh, want to give a shout out to Kendra Wheaton holding down the number one spot. Uh, LaKendra Kaufman and Roy Moses still holding it down um, as far as the top three producing agents um, for this week. All right, so let's see what's next. All right, so you know we always like to highlight in our uh, create your new lives. We always like to highlight our proprietary programming. So um, the one that we want to showcase today, um, <laughs> really, it's funny. It kind of takes me. Uh -oh. Shit, the wrong screen. Ah, now I see how I be doing it. I just be pressing OK. All right, um, you know, we like to show our mural because one of the things that we take pride in is the level that we approach being the number one brokerage firm as it relates to agent development, uh, which is what we strive to be. We strive to be the best in developing agents, uh, assisting agents to become their vision of what success is, uh, and being, um, uh, we want to be, um, legit about it, right? And you know, we don't we don't want it to be just smoke and mirrors. We don't want it to just be us talking, um, you know, a, a empty vessel speaking to you. Right? We want it to be when we make that promise that you know you're we're going to get you to the point to where you're able to realize your vision of success. When we make that pro promise, we want to be in a position. I ain't gonna say want. We're going to be in a position to where we're delivering on that promise to each and every person, agent or affiliate member that joins our organization. That's what's going to make us great uh, and be the number one real estate firm in the state in production and profitability, which is what we're looking to achieve. So um, the proprietary program that I want to highlight today is what I was imploring our agent members whose names are not on the board to do, which is take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunities that our realtors at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm have access to, right? Even our, age, even our affiliate members have an, a little bit of access as it relates to the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching, is, I mean, that's our secret sauce. Like everything that we do is built around concepts, techniques, aspects of, in essence, holding your hand as it relates to the application of what you're learning, right? You know, on my Monday Night Live yesterday, uh, the topic was we were looking at the difference between training and coaching. What was the difference between training and coaching? And uh, a couple of things that came out of the live was, look, training is you just capturing information. Right? You get information, people give you information, but coaching is you, someone assisting you with taking that information and applying it and walking with you step by step um, in p parallel with you as you begin to execute upon the information that you was given. And we all know, man, especially in real estate, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in, re in real estate, that we've been given information, and once we got the information, we still didn't know what to do with it. We still didn't know how to apply it. Uh, and that's one of the aspects and one, one of, just only one of the areas of why it's, you know, key to have a coach, to get a coach in your life, especially in doing something as difficult as real estate. You know, last week I was uh, I received my award for being top twenty um, Africa, top twenty black real real estate professional for the year twenty twenty 
which was an honor. Got that from the Houston Black Real Estate Association. Uh, and the guest speaker for the event was the current first vice president of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, Ms. Courtney Rose. Um, and, and that's a big deal. You've got over 90 some chapters um, of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which is the African American Trade Association. And uh, so to have her speak to us, that was an honor. And one of the things that she said was uh, in a room full of professionals, some you know, been there less than me. Some been there many more years than me. Like I've been licensed for 16 years, but there were some people in there have been licensed for 40 years in this business, being very successful, doing big things. Uh, and Courtney says, um, y'all know real estate is hard, right? A statement so simple. Real estate is difficult. What we do is hard, man. Uh, and the, the, the interesting thing about it is, is that the consumer base doesn't really understand or respect how difficult it is to be a realtor. Uh, but it is difficult. So imagine trying to do it without having somebody in your corner to help walk you through, especially if you're brand new. You're being exposed to something that you have no, um, you have no experience in it. Trying to navigate this situation of learning this business and operating this very difficult business that these, these uh, seasoned vets, you know, um, co-signed, on as being difficult, having having lasting power and sustainability, and you trying to get there by yourself, um, it doesn't have to be that way. I guess I'll say that. So that's where the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we offer comes in, how it helps out. Um, another thing that, that's going to come out when we begin talking about goals, uh, one of the great aspects of one-on-one -on -one coaching is that you have somebody there to hold you accountable. Uh, you have somebody there to, uh, when it's time to measure effectiveness, if what you're doing is working, you have somebody there, especially if it's a person that's already traveled the path that you're trying to go. Um, there's no need for you to reinvent the wheel or guess or come up with it. And look, people invest thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on coaching. Reach, Google it. Right? That's how important that coaching is. And for us to be in a position, uh, and it's a great something that I brag about, you know, for us to get our company to where we can survive, we can be sustainable, and offer something as valuable as one-on-one -on -one coaching to every single one of our realtors, that's paramount. And as we grow, we want to make sure that we maintain that, we hold on to that, uh, so that aspect of what we offer grows as well. Right? This is what I believe is our secret sauce. And this is what we offer to our realtors. So, again, I, I said it earlier. If you're watching this video uh, and, you're, and you are a Brooks and Davis real estate firm, uh, realtor and your name is not on that pending board, then you need to be doing your coaching once a week. You should right now pull your phone out and set your next month of coaching session so you ain't got to worry about it. All right? If you're a Brooks and Davis realtor. If you are not, Hey, Brooks and Davis Realtor, and you're watching this video. If you feel like this is what you need, this level of nurturing, this level of engagement from your organizational leadership, um, then click on that link. I'm going to show it to you again uh, before we shut this thing down. Go to that link and schedule an online or in-person company introduction so I can go talk to you more about it, what we have to offer here at Brooks and Davis, especially as it relates uh, to this hand holding, this hands on approach um, that we that we take. Okay, uh, let's see what's next. Oh, no, what am I doing? Let's stop All right, perfect. So uh, let's see what do we have coming up. All right, we got some great events coming up. Uh, I spoke about it uh, earlier. Uh, in a, in two days, two days left. So we got to look at. You know, how many people have registered as it relates to the space, um, as it relates to the space. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm about to get him out of here, man. I don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> but, um, but as it relates to the size of our facility, um, we're going to look at the registration today to see if we can take on some more people. If not, we're going to have to shut it down. Uh, we've gotten a lot of we've gotten a lot of great feedback and a lot of interest as it relates to our training that's coming up um, 
on this Thursday. Um, and that's going to be with a speaker, trainer, and coach, Mr. Art Allen. Um, he's going to be speaking about qualifying customers. We're going to be talking about negotiation skills, follow-up skills, and we're also going to be talking about time management. So it's going to be about a you know, two-and-a-half-hour training, middle of the day, uh, not too much. But I highly encourage you to learn more. If you want to learn more about Art, you'll be able to see his bio um, and as well as a little bit more detail about the specifics of the topics that I talked about here with the flyer, uh, then yeah, just go to the, the link that you see here on the flyer, the bit.ly backslash BDREF underscore training. You can go to that link and um, you'll be able to learn more and as well as, you know, register if the registration is still up. Um, then that, again, that's this Thursday from 12 p.m. to 2.30. Now, we're also going to be, this Saturday, doing another Action Jackson gun training. So if you're interested in getting your concealed handgun license, um, you can get with me or you can engage uh, Action Jackson through their email uh, to let them know that you're interested. Uh, the cost is only $165, and that includes your fees to go to the gun range, your ammo, and your weapon that you're going to be using to be able to get your license. Um, all right, so that's what we have coming up where, you know, I was speaking with Lisa the other day and we really got some great things in the books to where we're going to be focusing on doing as many events, doing a lot of events. Like my vision, if I, we can get to the point to where we're doing one to two events a week, man, I'm telling you. I mean, I, I would love to see that because I feel like that level of frequency, that level of activity would be great because, you know, people's schedule is all over the place sometimes and you're not able to miss things. I mean, you're, you have to miss things and, you know, that you shouldn't have to. So that's why uh, I, I want us to get to the point to where we can effectively offer that amount of events, events uh, weekly, monthly, um, to really drive the traffic for our beautiful facility that we have here. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into spend the rest of our time uh, going back through the psychology of real estate, right? And, you know, when I say this, I, I, this is episode seven, right? So we've, we've had six episodes. Um, we've spent time in this vein for the last six episodes, this being the seventh. Um, so with this being episode 154, uh, if you go back to 143, 45, go back to episode 145, um, then, no, no, I'm sorry, 147, I don't know, just go back to the other episodes, man, uh, and you'll see the very first one. Uh, that's where we dealt with the, you know, the intro where we're going when you start uh, we went through all of those. So, uh, again, this is episode 154. That had to be 147, right? So if, if my math doesn't fail me. <laughs> um, but the whole idea of why I wanted to do this series and do it this way is because the emotional and the mental strain that comes from this business is real. Yet, most brokerage firms, most trainings, most subject matters as it relates to real estate don't really talk about that aspect of it. They don't talk about how paramount confidence is in being successful in real estate. I think it's the case in any sales. In any sales, you being confident in what you're selling and what you're doing is critical to your success. Here's the challenge, though. If confidence is the thing that's really going to drive your business, how can a person that's never done this before have any level of confidence in what they're doing? Right? And here we go. Guess what? Customers can tell that you're not confident in what you're doing. So there has to be some kind, there has to be some kind of dynamic created that should come from the broker level, which is not coming. It should, there should be some kind of dynamic that's created that assists people through that transitional period 
of getting into a business where it is imperative that confident that you be confident if you're going to succeed traveling into a business asking a person to have that level of confidence in something that they've never done that is impossible so the broker's got to do a better job of helping people navigate that stuff. So it's not a hit or miss. It's not a crapshoot like the way that it's been or how we've been approaching it lately, right? So that's what this ses that's what this series is all about, is to really bring a light to these other aspects that are not really spoken about. Mostly what's taught in real estate is the technical aspects and the mechanical aspects uh, look, that's most of the stuff what agents of new agents are asking for, right? How do, how do I generate leads? How do I talk to a buyer? You know, what do I say? How do I pick up a listing? How do I, what do I say when I go on a listing appointment? You know, what do I say uh, when I'm meeting with a buyer or doing a renter? Like all of that's mechanical, all of that's te technical stuff, right? Uh, what it does is it assumes that you know how to get a person that's looking to buy a house. It, that assumes you even know what that looks like, what a qualified buyer really looks like, which most new realtors don't. Uh, that's assuming that you know when a person's not wasting your time, which most new realtors don't. They don't know. They, they get their time wasted a lot from people that don't, that ain't talking about nothing. They're not going to do nothing. They just, Time wasted. They just want to suck your time away from you. Most new realtors don't know how to identify that. Uh, and guess what? Once it all does come to the head, those kind of experiences, they, they're draining, right? Not only are they draining, they're very detrimental to the confidence and ego and new realtors, and it causes discouragement. And most people have to deal with that stuff by themselves, and that's not fair. Right. So that's why Brooks and Davis is going to do something about it. Because we don't feel like you should deal with that. You should have to deal with that stuff by yourself. That lack of expertise, the, the, what is created by the perceived failure, the perceived rejection. Most new, most new agents, when they're not having the results that they anticipate they should have by this time. Because, see, most new agents, they already have in their head how long that this thing should take. Hell, I did. Right. When, before I first got into real estate, I was just like, you know, man, I, three months, I'm good. Like, I'm going to be I'm gonna be cranking this thing out. And guess what? It took me eight months before I closed on my first deal. It took me eight months. Right? Because, again, I didn't have anybody to teach me no better, tell me no better. So um, it is it is it is it's critical that we create that dynamic. We put that dynamic in place to help guide and help navigate people through the psychological aspects of this business. All right, so when, when looking at the iceberg, the areas that we've already traveled, and again, I encourage you, go back to episode 147 from the beginning. We start at the bottom, and we've moved our way up, right? So now what we're looking at today is the when do you want it, right? We're gonna, and, and the when do you want it question, because keep in mind, guys, we... We've addressed when will you start, right? And we, we put parameters around that. And, you know, most realtors think that when they decide that they want to begin taking their, you know, people, most people believe when they make the decision that they want to enroll in real estate school, they've actually made the choice that, they, that they're that they going to start. Nope. There are people out there that believe that once they pass their real estate license, they made the decision that, you know, at that point they've, answered that question of when will you start and they're saying they're starting now. No, that's not the case, right? Because the real answer to that question comes when this industry punches you in your face, right? Everybody gets punched in their face when they first get in here because you don't have a frame of reference. So once you get in it and you realize, oh man, this ain't what I thought it was, at that point, you ask yourself, am I going to keep doing this or am I going to get out of it? Every day, people, every day realtors are making that decision. Right? And some of them stay with it, and some of them get out of it, and that's fine. So we, we did an episode where we put parameters around that. We did an episode where we dealt with the who are you, right? the different areas of personality, belief system, all those things. And we talked about how they impact you know, the results that you get 
You know, those things can get in the way. So we talked about that. We talked about the what do you want, right? Uh, how, you know, we showcased how critical it is to be crystal clear on what it is that you ultimately want, not just out of real estate, but what it is you ultimately want out of life. So you can see where real estate stacks up, where it fits um, as it relates to um, what you ultimately want, ultimate life vision. We talked about, you know, categories of intention, you know, areas of life management. You know, we talked about measuring your level of satisfaction, current satisfaction in different areas of your life, different elements of your life. So that was a jam-packed one as well. You know, the what do you want? Uh, we talked about the why do you want it? That's what we talked about last week. You know, ultimate life purpose, exercise, you know, be, and the reason that that was so important with answering the question of why do you want it is because that's the fuel, the emotional fuel that's going to get you to travel at the intensity, at the level um, that's required to break through boundaries, break through roadblocks, which this business is filled with them. But when you approach it with the right intensity, um, then there's nothing that can stop you and nothing that can hold you back. Well, having a big why, a strong enough why, is the fuel that you got to tap into to get you through, through everything that you're trying to get through, right? So today we're going to be talking about when do you want it, right? And, and for the most part, the when do you want it conversation has to do with goal setting, right? Effectively knowing how to set goals. So now I'm going to say this. Um, Mr. Allen, who's going to be training us on, on Thursday, he, he's probably going to talk a little bit about this, but he's not going to go into too much detail because I knew I was going to be dealing with it leading up to our session on Thursday. So it wasn't no point in him um, repeating or reiterating something that you all were going to hear so close to his event on Thursday, right? But he may touch upon it. Here's the thing about goals. Um, first of all, there's a cup. You first need to, if you're gonna go after something, it should be big. It should have a. It should have a major impact on your life. If you're gonna spend energy and time going after it, it should be big, right? And what they say, aim high. Right? You know, when in archery, when you got the target, you know they don't tell you to aim at the target. You know, even you know they tell you to aim above the target, right? So then wind, trajectory, things like that, you have a better chance of hitting the center. Aim high. Right? Because if you aim at it, then guess what? If you fall short, you, you know, you fall, you fell short of what you wanted. But if you aim above what you want or what you think you can achieve, if you fall short, you got a, got a great chance that you hit what, you, uh, what, you're, what, you're, what you're trying to achieve. Now, you know, there's a saying, and I, to this day I still don't understand it because it doesn't make sense to me, but there's a saying that says, shoot for the moon, you just might hit a star. Let me tell you why it don't make sense to me, right? Because as we know, stars are bigger than, than moons. We know that. They're farther away than moons, right? So it should be the opposite, but I get it. Um, you know, it, it, does, it, it just doesn't have that same pizzazz uh, if you say shoot for the stars and you might hit the moon. I don't know. To potato, potato. Who knows? Um, but the point is, if you're going to go after something, it needs to be big. So, uh, and again, this isn't just a real estate conversation, right? Because obviously, if you're going to go after something in real estate, go after something big in real estate. Remember, I, we talked about our core ideology uh, earlier. We have a core goal. You know, our core goal is to be the number one real estate company in production and profitability. Um, and right now, the current number one company is uh, Keller Williams Gold Management. It's, they got 14 offices, 4,300 agents, did 33,000 transactions, $9 billion. Right? That's the number one in the state. And guess what? They're, they're only numbered. 10 in the nation, right? 
So imagine we trying to be the number one in the United States. They're only number 10. They're $9 billion worth of production in an annual basis. That's our goal, right? That's what gets us going. Uh, and, and look, when it, when it comes to setting that goal, right, that's the what do you want, well, you have to put most, – most of the time, people would have you put a deadline, right? A time frame, timetable. I don't really coach a time frame in the regular sense, right? Because most people say, hey, look, you should want to accomplish this goal by this certain time. For example, we say, hey, we want to be the number one, and we did do this. We want to be the number one brokerage firm in production and profitability by the year 2020, right? So now, that's what most people do. That's how most people set goals. And then what happens? They try to, you know, achieve that goal, and then they don't hit it. And then what happens when they don't meet their goal? Then if they do, which is very few people do, but if they do set another goal, nine times out of ten, they limit this new goal. Because they weren't able to achieve the other goal, then they, they shrink what they're going after. So that happens. Uh, another thing that happens when you set the goal and you, and you put parameters or timeline and you go after it and you don't reach it, uh, people will get discouraged and they just stop going after goals altogether, right? Because they don't want to deal with that disappointment. Who wants to deal with that disappointment? Nobody wants to deal with that level of disappointment. So that's something that happens as well and that start stop, right? Because what will end up happening, and again, it deals with the psyche, right? So you set the goal, you don't meet the goal, then you get discouraged, you get disappointed, then you stop going after goals, then you get frustrated because your life's not going the way you want it to go, you're not seeing the results. Then somebody says, hey, you know what, you need to start setting, it's because you haven't set a goal. Then you say, hey, you know what, because you forgot about the last time you set the goal, you're like, you're right, I do need to set a goal because I'm looking for a solution because I want my life to change. Then you set the goal, uh, and then you repeat the same tragic cycle. That's how it happens with most people. So as it relates to what I'm going to talk about today with goal setting is the time frame that you put on the goal should not be a time frame of accomplishment because, look, it, you achieve it when you achieve it. Is it important? that you achieve the goal, especially if it's a big enough goal, meaning it's a goal that's a life-changing goal. Does it matter how soon you achieve the goal? Or is it just about achieving the goal? Right? Who cares how long it takes? It takes how long it takes. Um, I, I think I, I know I've probably said this. One of my, one of my, if not my favorite author, one of my favorite authors is Malcolm Gladwell. He has a podcast called Revisionist History. Uh, and one of his episodes, he was dealing with the LSAT. So if you're not familiar with the LSAT test, that's that test that most law, uh, um, most uh, universities, law schools, that's what I'm looking for, most law schools use the LSAT score to determine admissions into their score, into their school, meaning you got a real high LSAT, you can get to the Harvard Law School or the Brown Law School. Um, you know, yeah, LSAT's not that high, then you get into a lower tier uh, law school. So that's like 70% of admissions determination has to do with the LSAT. Well, the way that the LSAT is designed, it's not about, you know, first of all, it's a very difficult test, obviously, very difficult. Um, but it's not really about those that do the best and have the highest score. It's not about those that get the most answers right. It's not based on that. It's based on those that get the most answers right the fastest because you have this limitation of how long you can take the test. Well, what sense does that make? Like, why, why, why should it be based on the fact now, we could, we could both come to the same answer, but it takes me longer to get to the answer than this person, but they get uh, rewarded for 
get into it faster. And that's how a lot of us approach goal, goal setting. That, that deadline that we place on it holds so much weight, even to the point of we will circumvent our goal because we want to put ourselves in a better position to be able to achieve it within the time frame. Right? So we'll, go, we'll, we'll come up with a shorter goal. We'll go after smaller goals, you know, these mini goals instead of this one big goal, and then you attack it in stages. So that's not how the deadline should be used in goal setting. The deadline should be used as an area of measurement, as an area of assessment, meaning, okay, we want to be the number one real estate firm in production and profitability, all right? It takes however long it takes, but next year we're going to assess our progress, right? So the goal deadline, right, the when do you want it, really is an opportunity for you, an opportunity for measurement to see if you're moving in the right direction. Uh, another example I'll give, if you're going on a long trip, say you're going up to, I mean, I, it's not a long trip, but say you're going to Dallas about four hours, you go up 45, right? So I know I can go to Dallas, I go up 45 north. So as I'm driving to Dallas, right? Well, if my I, if my goal is to get there, to, is to get to Dallas, it's not necessarily to get to Dallas in three, four hours, right? Well, it may be some of y'all's because y'all may not like driving, so y'all trying to get there as soon as possible. Uh, but the 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 result that you're looking for is not necessarily to get to Dallas in four hours; it's just to get to Dallas, right? Right? So if it takes four hours, eight hours, ten hours, whatever. If you get there, you get there. That's what you're trying to do. Well, if you're going up 45, right, then what you'll see is at some point as you begin to near Dallas, you'll start seeing signs. These signs that say Dallas, 200 miles. Or, you know, Dallas, 150 miles. Dallas, 100 miles, right? So... And, and they, they strategically place these signs at certain intervals on the path for you to get to where you're trying to get to, your destination. That's what deadlines are. They're just points to determine if you're moving in the right direction. Right? Because guess what? Somebody could say, well, Mike, it may, it may take about four hours to get to Dallas. I'm like, okay, cool. But I may go I 10 West. And I promise you, we talked earlier. Oh, I said it earlier. It shouldn't be about how long it takes you to get there. You should just get there. If you, I don't care how many hours you go I 10 West, you're not getting to Dallas. Period. <laughs> you're never going to make it. So at some point, if I'm on I 10 going West, right? which is going to take me, you know, Santa Monica Pier, I'm going to end up at the Pacific Ocean at some point. Well, I should have seen some kind of marker or something that was telling me I'm on my path to what I'm trying to accomplish. And if I go out 10 West, I won't see any markers that are telling me that I'm moving in the direction of getting to Dallas. I won't. So when you set the goal, you should put parameters like 90 days, six months, 12 months, where you're gonna where you're gonna assess, right? So you go after it, right? Because you know next week we're gonna be talking about massive action plan, which is another reason why a lot of people are not able to achieve what what it is they want because they haven't answered that question of how will you get it, which is the last question that we're gonna address. They don't have a plan. Well. In the what the way we coach things is that you'll have a plan and say for six months you're going to execute this plan, meaning you're going to put your head down and you're going to go at this plan of execution 157 miles an hour. You're going to go after, it. and then in six months you're going to look up and you're going to say, "Hey, did I achieve what I was trying to achieve? Am I in Dallas, right, or am I in Madisonville?" And I got to you know, 
you know, I'm halfway there, right? Or um, am I am I three quarters of the way there, right? So that's what the deadline is. The when do you want it is all about, right? It's about at what point are you going to look up and assess where you are. So now here's the difference in looking at it from that perspective. If my goal is to get to Dallas and they, somebody tells me it should take four hours. So I say, all right, in four hours, I'm going to just be in Dallas. Well, in, so you get in the car and you're packed up and you get on the road and you're moving towards Dallas. Well, what if this big storm happens, right? Or what if uh, there's a major wreck and you get into traffic, right? There's all these external uh, variables that you don't have any control over that could impact how long it takes you to get to Dallas, right? So say one of those things happens. Well, you look up in four hours and you're not in Dallas. So this is what this is what a lot of people do. Well, we might as well just go home. We might as well just turn it around. We might as well just pull over. Let's not we're not even gonna go to Dallas no more. They just give up. They give up on the goal. Because it didn't happen in the time frame a lot. Well, that's not what you should do. You look up in four hours and you say, well, how far away are we? Well, now, we may be another hour, another 45 minutes or whatever. And then guess what you do? You, you either keep on the same goal and make some adjustments. All right, well, we need to speed it up. You know, especially if we do, if it is something, we, you know, we're trying to get there in a certain amount of time, then you need to make some adjustments. You need to drive a little faster. Uh, we can't make no more pit stops or whatever. You just got to make some adjustments to still be able to achieve what you're trying to achieve. But you don't give up. You keep going after the goal until you achieve it. We're going to keep going after being the number one real estate company in production and profitability until we achieve it, right? Period. Because here's the beauty of it. Here's the beauty of, of goal setting and what it's really all about. It goes to the quote that Tony Robbins said. It's not about what you've achieved. It's about who you become. You, you become the person that can achieve that goal, right? So for us to be the number one real estate company in production and profitability, the exciting part of it is who we will have to become as an organization to be able to achieve that goal, that becoming process, that development process, right? Who will I have to become as the CEO of Brooks and Davis for us to be able to achieve that feat? Who will you all have to become as realtors for us to achieve that feat? What level of leadership uh, categories and levels will we have to create? What kind of ideas, what kind of innovations will have to come to the play, right? So it, the goal draws out your greatness. It forces you, one, as you get committed to going after that, it forces you to become, it forces you to grow. It forces you to develop. Right? And that's what this is really all about. It's pulling that greatness out of you. And again, it doesn't matter how fast. It doesn't matter. Right? So the whole idea around this and, the, and this goal setting conversation, you know, again, answering that question of when do you want it, I want you to understand that the, the, the deadline, the time frame, should not be the thing that determines if you get on or get off of chasing after the goal. And right now, that is the thing that people are using or allowing to derail them, right? You know, with the trains, you, with a train, you're going up the train track, and if, you know, the train 
you know, they'll get up to that cross that crosshair where you hit the switch and it'll go keep going in one direction or go in a different direction. Well, setting a goal and not hitting it in the time frame that you put on it, a lot of people are using that to determine which direction their train is going, right? And, it, and a lot of times because of that, they get off track of where they really want to go because they got derailed behind not hitting it in the time frame that was allotted. So get rid of that. Get rid of all of that. And understand that it takes how long it takes. Set the goal. It takes how long it takes. So I hear you guys already, you, you people that have subscribed to the whole SMART goal and goal setting, you got to do the SMART goal. It's got to be specific and measurable and attainable. And I don't know what the R is, but I think T is time. I get it. I don't agree with it. Because I tried that, and I've taught that, but when I look at results and people be, be receiving certain results, right, I'm seeing something completely different based on this new philosophy that I've subscribed to as it relates to setting big goals, focusing on becoming the person to be able to achieve that goal and finding the beauty in not necessarily you having achieved the goal, but who you were forced to become, the greatness that was forced to come out of you for you because you were going after such a lofty goal, right? That's the thing that I subscribe to now, and that's the thing that, I, that I've been seeing phenomenal results out of people's lives. They're, I'm seeing people, even myself, achieving great, great and greater things that I ever thought that I could achieve just with a minor switch in mindset and, and, and seeing things differently, right? So with that being said, that's all we have for today, right? Again, wanted to spend time. We're going through our psychology, psychological iceberg for success. You know, this is all, this is real estate. This is sales. This is the stuff that you got to deal with before the other stuff starts lining up, right? Before the client base starts lining up, before the consistency starts lining up, uh, you know, doing deals on a, on a, 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 on a, a consistent basis, before that stuff starts lining up, you know, having too many leads and too many clients and too many customers to to serve and having to begin to build a team and hire people. And like before any of that stuff lines up, this stuff got to get lined up. And each and every one of you all, it's got to get lined up. Because this here is the foundation that is going to support this, this emotional, this mental, this stuff that we're talking about here. This is the foundation that's going to support how big you're able to create your organization and how much you as a business person, because all realtors are business people, how much you as a business person are going to be able to achieve. This foundation determines all of that, right? All right we got all these big skyscrapers here in Houston. Well, when they started building these buildings, if you look at, how, at these big buildings, when they first begin to big, build these big buildings, they all start with this deep, deep, deep hole. Right, because they understand how deep they go down, which is what we're doing. We're going down. We're going in. How deep you go down determines how tall they can build those buildings. And it's the same for you. How deep you go in is going to determine how great you're going to be and what you're going to be able to achieve. You got to start by going deep. All right. With that being said. Uh, does anybody have any questions, any comments? Uh, I do have the chat open, or you can unmute yourself. Um, does anybody have anything to share today? You know, I always like to give you all an opportunity to share. Um, um, remember, we do offer CE credit. Um, we do offer CE credit. 
for you know the agents that have come on an hour of seed credit. You know, I always like to end with um, showcasing that or reminding you all of that that hour of continuing education elective credit. Uh, next week we're going to continue the conversation and we're going to be looking at how will how will you get it. So it's probably only two more episodes in this series. So we're going to look at the how will you get it. And again, that's that, that massive action plan, that's that plan um, that you want to execute upon to put you in the best situation to achieve your result or the what do you want. So we're going to be digging into that on next, next week. How will you get it? That's what the next, the next area is going to be about. Okay, um, we talk about C credit. Again, if you're watching this and you're not a part of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm, I told you I was going to show you that link. Um, here's your opportunity. Set up an online or in-person company introduction, and you can learn more about what we have to offer here. In addition to the, to the things that I'm talking about here, there's so much more that, that we bring to the table as a brokerage firm for someone who's looking to have a large amount of success in real estate. Um, we're here to help you get there. So if you need that, if you feel like you need, need that to get to the next level, please feel free. Mm -hmm. I'd love to meet you. All right, and last but not least, we're on social media. Uh, I feel like it's the, great, the best way for us to continually engage one another. Um, you know, I, I'm not a hard sell kind of guy. Uh, you know, you don't have to say yes right now, right? Let's just date. <laughs> and, um, and you'll see at some point you know, what we're all about. So through our social media channels, that's the, the great, the best outline, uh, outlet, that's what I'm talking about, the best outlet to be able to get that level of exposure is through what we do on our social media outlets. So that's YouTube, subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified. Facebook, like the page, you'll be notified uh, whenever we're sending out new posts, new events that are coming up, new videos, new information you're going to be able to get notified. Uh, and then I'm on the other ones as well. You know, again, great place to one-on-one -on -one engage. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm there. All right. So with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and cue my music. Shall we begin? No, we are done for today. We had a great time. We talked about identifying goals. We talked about the most effective ways to execute after goal setting. Um, we also took a look into our moment in four. We talked about the criticalness of uh, the criticalness of positive thinking. Right? We looked at that. Um, we also looked at our one-on-one -on -one coaching and went into detail about that and how impactful it is for our Brooks and Davis Realtors. Uh, and again, showcase two upcoming events if you're looking to get your concealed handgun license. We've been doing those at least three to four a month. And then we have a great training uh, by Mr. Art Allen. Very excited to see what's that on this Thursday. With that being said, I'm Peacock proud to be you all CEO and broker. My name is Michael G. Davis coaching, and I'm mean, a realtor plus business coach. Looking forward to coaching you into the cosmos. It's time to take off. Y'all have a great one. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>